In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you some ways to fix some annoying iPhone features that Apple isn't telling you about. So of course, timestamp to all these hidden features and tips and tricks will be in the description down below for your pleasure. Let's start off with the most efficient way to create planners for your calendar. You see, you may think the best method is just to launch the calendar app and just select the date and then create whatever appointment coming up. No, there actually is a better way of doing this. You see, all you need to do is just launch Spotlight Search. In Spotlight Search, literally type in something like dentist appointment on November 11th at 2 p.m. So long as you know the date, the month, and the time, Siri will understand that and you'll have the ability to quickly just tap add and it just gets created and fills in everything else automatically and just tap check mark and it'll be created on your calendar planner. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I launch Instagram, you know, sometimes you're just browsing through stuff and then out of nowhere, either the app crashes and stuff like that. And it's like, and you're probably like, darn, that was actually a good clip I was going to send my friend. Just like YouTube, Instagram now has the ability to actually and view your history on content you were looking at. To access this, just go into your system settings and activities, and you wanna go ahead and click on activity right here, your activities. And then in here, scroll down so you find watch history. And your entire watch history will pop up, and you have the ability to actually categorize on certain dates, newest oldest, as well as filter through Arthur's. So if you know certain content creators, you can just look at them from right here. So that is an amazing feature that Instagram recently added. And if you don't see it on your phone, just make sure you update the Instagram app. It will be added. Now this next one is for those that have a hard time like pronouncing certain things. An example of how I use this tool is whenever I receive an email for like a future conference and then I don't know how to pronounce that person's name, I could have Siri actually dictate the word for me. So this way I generally know how to pronounce it properly. So I have it already enabled on my phone, but the way this works, I can just take like any text right here and then tap one more time, tap the arrow, and I have the speak functionality. Eliminator models. And Siri was just read out loud whatever I just highlighted. This is disabled by default. So to enable this, simply just go into your iPhone settings and go into accessibility. In the accessibility tab, go into the read and speak tab and you want to go ahead and enable the accessibility reader and then exit out of that. And where it says speak section, make sure this is turned on and you enable the highlights. And by simply doing that, now anything that you're highlighting and you tap this little arrow, you'll see a speak functionality as well as a spell if you're trying to spell out a word, but you can visually see that. That's just part of the accessibility package. So now whenever you receive like emails from certain people and you have no idea how to pronounce their names, just do that and your phone will actually read out loud their name for you. Now, whenever you're sharing a link URL, you don't like it to take up like the entire body of your message. You can change the style. So once you paste a link on your like Messenger or iMessage in our case, you can always just long hold and this little bubble above here will pop up. You could tap customize and here you can change between the different styles. You could send it with a thumbnail or just a quick link like so. So it doesn't take up that much space and will most likely surprise the person you're trying to send a link to. Again, just tap once for this customized view or you could just convert it to a link. And you can just send the link URL just like that. Now, before we go on to the next one, if you could kindly take two seconds and hit that like button and like, those really do help out the channel because as that allows the channel to be powered by you guys, the viewers, which is why you don't see brands for like a sponsorship segment take like a minute or two off your time. So thank to you guys by just hitting that like button and like, allow this channel to be driven and powered by the viewers, not brands. So thank you so much for taking the time and just doing that. Let's carry on to the next one, which is sleep sounds. If you're like me, who sometimes like to fall asleep with like earbuds or over ear headphones, instead of downloading or subscribing to like a sleeping subscription to play like soothing sleeping sounds, it's built into your iPhone. This is a native feature that can be located in control center. If you swipe down, and this is why I bring a backup phone. I guess we have to wait. Okay, this phone decided to work again. So right here we have like these musical ear notes. One for sleeping, romance, sunset, or just energy music. You can just tap 
and then your phone will begin playing sleeping sounds all for free utilizing Apple Music. And no, you do not need to be subscribed to Apple Music to have access to all these like sleeping, soothing sounds to help you fall asleep. So to access this launch control center, just long hold any blank area and then tap add control and just type in music. And right here, you'll have ambient music choices to choose from. And this is where you go ahead and actually select which theme you like. And that's how you can have ambient music playing through the earbuds for free at no additional cost. But while wearing the AirPods, if you have the hearing icon also enabled, you can also enable background sounds from here as well and select between a variety of different styles to choose from, including like rain on the roof, the ocean, night, or a bonfire as an example. You also have them built in right here with more categories if you're looking for something more nature-y. Now, an annoying feature on the iPhone, to me it was annoying, is that anybody can have access to my camera by just simply long holding it will unlock. And they could take a photo, but they just won't have access to the entire phone aside from that. If you like to lock the camera app when your device is locked, you can now finally do so. Just go into your settings in the main page, go into camera, tap on camera, and then scroll down and go ahead and disable lock screen swipe to open camera. This way, now when our device is locked and I cover up the screen, and now if somebody has my phone, they do the swipe to have access to the camera, they won't. But you are required to remove the camera icon on your lock screen because they can still override it that way. Now, if you're somebody who uses the native Apple podcast app, there's a cool hidden feature in these now. But whenever you're listening to like a podcast that has like a different theme, like they speak very slow or fast, you could tap the three dot icon right here, go into settings. And if you scroll all the way down, you could customize the settings for that show to be the default one whenever that show in particular is played. So you could hear, you could change the speed as well as enabled enhanced dialogue. And now once you do that, the setting that you change will be the preference whenever you start that show and it will be separate from all the other shows you've been listening to. So that's a cool little tool right there. Now, if you have an iPhone that has a physical action button, no longer has a silent switch, you may think you only have one action at a time, right? Wrong. As you can see here, my action button can do more than just one single thing at the same time. I could set the temperature on my vehicle to a set temperature, lock my car, toggle my home locks. And if you'd like to know how I was able to accomplish this, this is how. From here, you want to go into your iPhone settings and then just scroll down until you find action button. And then instead of selecting one of these fixed ones, go all the way to the shortcut app on the bottom where it says show action mode menu, select this and select show folders. And then select the action one that you've created. And now you're set. Now if you press the action button, you will have this pop-up menu giving you more options instead of just one single option. And this also works on the lock page as well. Really amazing, super useful. Now we all know taking a screenshot is just like that. And you could tap here to quickly like adjust certain things or use visual intelligence, right? Notice how I have the faster, older method, which allows me to dismiss just like so without being the default visual intelligence. This is all customizable. That's all you need to do to change your screenshot to be much more quicker than the new one. Just go into general, in the settings, go into screen capture, and here you could enable full screen preview, automatic visual intelligence. So now whenever I do this, it gives me like the old school method. I think the best one is just to have this and that disabled and gives you this method, which allows you to quickly swipe away. And in here, you could decide if you'd like to also include your vehicle CarPlay screenshot as well. Now for the HDR format, if you like the highest resolution, you can always change it, but standard works perfectly fine for all cases. Now, if you're somebody who uses ChatGPT a lot and you like to copy and paste that ChatGPT gives you to like an email or a document as an example, but you don't like how the format's like all wonky, just doesn't match with the format that's being used for iMessage or your mail app. So for instance, if I go ahead and ask this generic question, this is the reply that ChatGPT gives me. If I just want to copy this 
you know, once I hit pace, the format's all wonky. Well, if I shake my device and hit undo, and we go ahead and copy this again, and now I hit pace, but notice right next to the pace, it says pace and match style. By selecting that, you can hit allow pace, it continues to format that's used on that app. So it doesn't look all wonky anymore. So it's a cool little tool that Apple gave us that they just never mentioned. That you can indeed paste matching the app original format. Just keep in mind, this will still keep the ChatGPT watermark though. Now, whenever you're listening to music on Apple CarPlay, if you're using the Apple CarPlay music app, you could bookmark your playlist. And this is how you could do that. What you gotta do is launch the music app on your smartphone. And once you launch it, in the same library tab as it is on your Apple CarPlay, long hold on these existing ones, and you have the ability to pin or unpin. So I'm gonna start from scratch. Again, you could do playlist, music, or dedicated song. Just long hold on one of them until you get to this menu. And on top where it says pin playlist, and that's, Oops, I guess I reached my max. I'm going to go ahead and clear one real quick. I want to clear this one. And now I'm going to go ahead and pin this one. And if you notice in real time, it actually does update. And that's how you could create some custom playlists you have quick access to, just like that. But other than that, there you guys have it. Now you are a pro when it comes to using your iPhone to its full potential, eliminating those annoyances. Now, if you enjoyed this video, if you wish to watch more, maybe you like to find out what cool stuff you could do as well, but this time on your Apple CarPlay side of things, I cover all that in greater detail in this video over there, including a clever way to disable the autoplay ability whenever you get in your car, immediately starts playing whatever music or audio source you were last listening to. I show you a clever way to disable that autoplay ability. So definitely check out that video over there. Thank you. So much for watching.